I've got a brand new half inch Veritas PMV11 chisel, and I'm gonna show you how to set it up and sharpen it for the first time. All right, so this is the Veritas PMV11 bench chisel. Uh, this one's a half inch. This is my favorite size of uh, bench chisel. If you look at the first set of chisels I bought from Lee Nielsen, uh, the half inch chisel is a good inch or two shorter than the rest of them. So I use the half inch chisel almost uh, continuously in the shop. This particular chisel has a torified maple handle and it has a flat on these two surfaces to keep it from rolling off your bench when you're not using it. I think that'll come in handy. Um, the, the real benefit to buying a higher end chisel after you look at the steel is how well the chisel's prepared for you to start using it. And the back of the uh, Veritas chisels are, are already lapped. Uh, so there's just a little bit of polishing work to do on the back. We aren't gonna polish the entire back face, just the end, but we know that this chisel is flat and it's lapped and it's gonna take a lot less work to get ready to use. If you compare it to something like uh, this less expensive Narex chisel, uh, the back of this chisel actually has ridges on it and if you listen, you can hear my fingernail run over and this one is just dead, totally smooth. So I would need to start with maybe even a lapping film to, to, get this, uh, to get these ridges removed out and then I would work my way up through the stones to polish the back. Uh, but with this, uh, with this Lee Valley one, it's gonna be a lot less work. That one I'd probably start with a, a fine grit sandpaper and, and then move to my 1,000 grit and my, uh, I think this is a 4,000 grit, and then to the 8,000. Uh, with this Veritas, I'll probably start here on my middle grit stone and then jump to the finer polishing stone. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do before I, uh, before I polish the back is I wanna ease these edges. The, this, uh, this heiress between the land of the chisel and the bottom of the chisel is really sharp. And I've cut my hands more times on this edge than I have the cutting edge of any chisel. Uh, and so I've learned to take uh, either a diamond file or some fine grit sandpaper and just lightly knock that edge down. And Lee Valley in their instructions, they say only, only do you know the back two inches of the chisel blade. Uh, they don't want you to have a, a dull edge right up here on the corner, but I've never found that to be an issue uh, in, in use with my chisels. As long as the edge is sharp, you're gonna, get, you're gonna get some slicing ability on those corners. So the next thing we wanna do is, uh, is soak our stones. These are, um, you know, I've forgotten the brand name of these stones. It'll come to me while I'm working. But uh, I wanna polish the back of this chisel without changing the shape of this flat. On a chisel that's wider, anything wider than I'd say a half inch, uh, you can just push the chisel up and back on this stone. But with a narrower chisel, you're, you're likely to start rolling it as you move it back and forth. So I actually like to go in and out on the stone as I work my way across. Now I've flattened these stones with my diamond plate uh, and it's important that you do that because you don't want to put, you don't want to change the shape when you've got a nice flat back chisel like this. So wipe this off and take a look. And we've started to polish here. All right, you can see it's starting to get a little brighter at the end than it is on the, the rest of this chisel. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna flip this stone around so I can get a fresh edge, and I'm gonna go along the length across the short dimension of the chisel to put a new scratch pattern in. And I don't know if you notice, when I pull the chisel off of the stone, it's it's so flat that it's actually suctioned onto the stone and I wanna be sure not to lift the handle up. I wanna push the handle down and break it free that way because I don't wanna dub the edge here. Okay, so we'll set this one aside. 
This is my 8,000 grit stone. Some people like to stop at eight. Some people like to stop at 10. Uh, it's really up to you. Uh, the more you polish the edge, the longer the edge will last. And, but there's a point of diminishing returns. So, um, you know, go as far as you feel like you need to, whatever your personality dictates. Um, I am more uh, interested in using the chisel than I am in sharpening it. So I don't go much past 8,000 grit. Okay, starting to get easier to tell the difference between where I've been and where I haven't been. Go for another pass. Okay, so we're starting to get a mirror shine on here and for a brand new chisel for this particular chisel, I'm actually happy with that. Um, I would call that ready to sharpen. The next thing I'll do is flatten this stone again, and then we'll proceed with the sharpening as if we were just regularly sharpening a chisel. And you'll notice when I'm flattening, I start with the finest grit stone and work my way down to the coarser grit stones. Um, I'm not worried about transferring the swarf from the fine grit to the coarse grit, but I don't wanna go the other way. I wanna keep those bigger particles out of the finer grit stones. This is my thousand grit stone. It's already flat. I haven't used it yet today, so. It's ready to go. Uh, I'm using a uh, Lee Nielsen honing guide. And I've got the longer jaws on here. Uh, I have these ground. I have the jaw, the tip of the jaws ground a certain way so that I can set most of my bevel up bench planes in without having to use a setup guide. Uh, but when I'm doing a chisel, I like to use a 35 degree secondary bevel. So I have a little setup block that I use for that. And I'm referencing this little notch here on the guide. And I use either 40 degrees for bevel up and, and 35 degrees for just about everything else with the exception of one uh, dovetail pairing chisel that I have. All right, so we're set up for a 35 degree angle. This chisel is uh, basically like we've pulled it straight off the grinder. It's ready to be honed. Uh, and the first couple of passes need to be a pullback pass. So I'm gonna put it at the far end of the, of the stone. I'm right up over the top of the stone with my head and I'm gonna pull straight back. I'll probably do that one or two more times. Okay, now we've established See if you can get that. We've already established a really small secondary bevel there on the tip, and hopefully that shows up in the reflection. And honestly, if this was a chisel that I had just uh, reground and brought back over the stones, that's ready to move on to the next uh, stone because I can feel a burr as I bring my thumb down the back of the chisel and off the end. I can feel a burr there, but <laughs> three passes, I usually do at least five or six. Okay, so we have a burr. We're ready to move on to the next stone. I'm gonna clean the, the wheel on the honing guide, and I'm gonna clean the side of the chisel that I'm polishing, the beveled side, but I'm not gonna mess with the back. I don't wanna break that, uh, I don't want to break that burr off when I'm drying the chisel off. And I'm drying the chisel because I don't want to contaminate the next stone. So here we go on the 4,000 grit. And we're taking more passes here because the, 
The purpose of this stone is to polish the angle that we set with the coarser stone. So again, you can see there's just a little polished edge there. And then we'll go up to our 8,000. Get this wheel cleaned off. So all we need to do now is take the burr off. I'm going to set the chisel down with the tip hanging off the stone and I'm going to slide it side to side as I drag it onto the stone. And the hope there is that as I pull it onto the stone, the burr falls off on the edge instead of sticking in the soft stone and contaminating it. Okay, so that chisel is sharp. All I need to do now is wipe it down with my oily rag to uh, prevent any of that water that we just put on that fresh edge from uh, blooming and rust. And uh, each time I sharpen, when I, the first thing I do is I go to this fine stone and I take a few swipes across the stone on the back of the chisel to keep that polish up. And what that means is as I remove material as I sharpen, the polish moves its way back, and I don't have to sit here and do a dedicated polishing session as the chisel gets used up. One last bit of information about brand new chisels. Uh, because the edges are rough ground before the heat treating process, the tips of these chisels when they're fresh tend to be a little bit brittle. So expect to have to sharpen them a little more often when they're new. As you use them and grind them and work your way back from the tip of the chisel, the steel will get a little more durable and you won't have to sharpen as much.